Hello and welcome to Science for Juniors with me, a star in my own right, SRK or scientist Radhe Krishna and this is my twinkling bright assistant Bini. Star? Twinkle? Professor, what are you talking about today? Oh Bini, it's my favorite topic. When I was a little kid, I used to count stars in sky endlessly. When I grew up, I used to sit and stare at the moon for hours and wonder at its changing size over the month. And when I had a telescope, I... Um, that's very nice, Professor. But what about today's show, sir? Of course. Of course. All right. Let me see if you can guess what I'm talking about. It changes its shape. It's bright, rather very bright, but does not have its own light. It works its way round and round around the earth for the whole month, appearing and disappearing, waxing and waning. Why? That's the moon. Ah, Benny, you cut my riddle short. But anyway, you are right. I was talking about our moon. Let me take you to an exploratory trip into the sky and find out what all heavenly bodies exist in our sky. Let's go right into our virtual world. The night sky commonly refers to the sky seen at night. A night sky is full of bright stars, planets, moons, meteors and other celestial bodies. Stars in these constellations appear to twinkle if seen from the Earth. The twinkling takes place due to the atmosphere of the Earth. Planets are celestial objects which do not twinkle. Most of these planets are not visible to our naked eyes. We use a telescope to view the planets. The moon is also visible in the night sky. It appears to change shape all along the month. The changing shapes of the moon are called its phases. Some of the phases are new moon, full moon and crescent moon. In addition, we also have shooting stars or meteors that appear to fall from the night sky as a bright streak of light. The light is produced by the entry of pieces of rocks called meteorites into the Earth's atmosphere. Back into the real world, billions of kilometers away from the stars and moons and hopefully from big meteorites. Yes, Professor. I hear those meteoroids are very dangerous. Well, they are very, very hot. Burning hot when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. But nothing to worry about since as many as 500 meteorites reach the Earth's surface every year. And they keep hitting us? In such a case, how safe are we? Oh, Binny, don't worry. Meteorite might not find their way towards you. Definitely, because most of these get completely burnt in the Earth's atmosphere even before they reach us. So you and me will be safe. Hmm, at least for the time being. Thank God! But Professor, what are meteoroids? Benny, meteorites are basically debris from the space. More precisely, pieces of rock. In case they survive the journey through the Earth and land on its surface, we call them meteors. The fastest meteorites travel through the solar system at a speed of around 42 kilometers per second. But Professor, how big are they? Can they destroy the Earth? Not at all, Binny. No fear of that. Their sizes can range anywhere from a grain of sand to that of a cricket ball. Sir, is moon we see every day also falling towards us? Why? Yes, Binny, that's right. Moon is indeed falling towards the earth. But it will never reach us. This is because it is held in its orbit by earth's force. Um... 
Okay, okay, I understand that you don't understand. This is too much of burden on your little grey cells. Let's first explore the moon in the virtual world. The moon appears as a silverish black ball in the night sky. It's 3,84,403 kilometers away from the Earth. The moon orbits the Earth and is therefore called the natural satellite of the Earth. It takes 27.3 days to revolve around the Earth. The moon does not have its own light and reflects the light of the sun. We are able to see only that part of the moon on which sunlight is reflected. The time period taken by moon to complete one revolution around the Earth is known as the lunar month. As the moon circles the Earth, it seems to appear in different shapes in the sky. These shapes are called phases of the moon. In a lunar month, the moon goes from one new moon to the next new moon. I hope that was illuminating for you. The next time you are gazing up at the moon, remember that the moon is the fifth largest natural satellite in the solar system. It's huge! Professor, where did the moon come from? Penny, the moon came from the Earth itself. About 4.5 billion years ago, an object roughly the size of the planet Mars collided with the Earth, ejecting a large amount of debris that collected and formed the moon. So what is moon consisted of, Professor? Loose rocks? Oh no, Binny! There are valleys, mountains, craters and lava plains on the moon. And now, scientists have very recently even discovered water on the moon. Oh, I wonder what living on the moon would be like, Professor. I wonder about that too, Binny. Firstly, I would weigh less, of course, because the moon's gravity is only about one-sixth of the Earth's. Secondly, since it has no atmosphere, so we would need special equipment to keep our lives going. Also, lack of atmosphere would mean that astronaut Neil Armstrong's footprints will probably last there for 10 million years. Sounds difficult proposition to go and settle down on Moon. Benny, you know Earth is one of the rare planets which has only one Moon. Our other companion planets in our solar system have more than one. That would be lovely, having more than one brightly lit moon shining in the sky. Sounds fabulous, Binny. But for now, let me take a step further into the virtual world for you. Moons are solid, rocky bodies which orbit the planets in the solar system. The Earth has only one moon, but larger planets such as Jupiter, which has a greater gravitational pull, has many moons of different sizes. Like planets, these moons give off no light and are only visible when they reflect the sunlight. Isn't that amazing? So many moons out there in the space and we have landed on just one. I wonder if I ever can catch a ride in this life to any one of those moons. You see, when I was a boy, I was amazed at the many billions of stars. Professor, does our moon have days and nights like here on Earth? Excellent question. Well, Binny, on the moon, the sun rises only every four weeks. But let me go on with narrating something fascinating about the moon. Do you know that the moon is causing our planet Earth to slow down by about 1.5 milliseconds every century? Is it? That's right. The moon's gravity pulls on the Earth's oceans, causing tides and all this tugging 
causes the Earth to lose some of its rotational energy and slow down a bit. But before you blame the Moon altogether, you must know that the Sun too is helping out in pulling at the Earth's oceans. This is why we get very high and low tides from time to time. When the gravity of the Moon and the Sun line up, we get the biggest and smallest tides. Don't the Sun and the Moon have an equal pull? Of course the Sun and the Moon don't have an equal pull, given that they are neither of the same size nor at same distance. Don't start getting confused at how similar they look in size from the Earth. The Sun is actually 400 times larger than the Moon, but it only appears equal because it's also 400 times further away. Wow! That's amazing! And now let's orbit back to where we started for a quick recap. A night sky consists of bright stars, planets, moons, meteors and other celestial bodies. The moon orbits the Earth and is therefore called the natural satellite of the Earth. Moon takes 27.3 days to revolve around the Earth. The moon does not have its own light and reflects the light of the sun. As the moon circles the Earth, it seems to appear in different shapes in the sky. These shapes are called phases of the moon. In one lunar month, the moon goes from one new moon to the next new moon. And that's all we have for you on the moon in this session. Hope you get more answers as you gaze up at this natural wonder in the night sky. Goodbye.